Hello everyone. Um, today I am going to be discussing um, fetishism um, and how I have navigated it and how I navigate it now. Now that's going to be, it could be a really, really long topic. So I'm not going to go into, you know, all the fetishes and blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to talk about my experience and I would love to hear if anyone else's experience this kind of stuff. So a little background on me. Um, I am Jamaican and I was a very weird Jamaican growing up. Um, in fact, I remember when I was a part of a performing arts group, the running joke used to be, oh my God, do you have Caucasian in your blood? Because you have no rhythm. Of course, now I do have rhythm, but I was just so weird. I was so awkward in the body. I still am. I'm very clumsy as fuck. Um, my personality, I lacked quite a bit of personality. And so instead of trying to build a personality, I try to learn many different skills and talents in order to overcompensate for not having like a bold personality. So um, I found pretty quickly that when I came to America, a lot of people thought I was weird. Um, and I've tried to fit into many little groups and they always don't work out. I always got rejected. Um, and uh, so when I moved, to Pennsylvania, I still felt like a fish out of water because we don't have the uh, population of white people we do in, in, um, here. We don't have that in Jamaica. So of course, having a lot of white people around me, I didn't know how to interact with them. But fortunately, my first job, I realized that I had a lot in common with the ones in the countryside. And I had a lot in common with black people from the countryside as well. Um, unfortunately, in Pennsylvania, there's not a lot of white people in the countryside. So there's a lot of white people around me. Um, so that kind of influenced, well, I had to change my type real quick because other, otherwise I would be outsourcing people from like 100 to mile, 200 miles away. So I had to adapt. And fortunately, my first relationship was fantastic. I was the first person of color that this person has ever dated. And we were like two peas in a pod. Or arguments were never the typical. Or arguments were like me bullying this person to save money because you're 20 years older than me. And you're literally like always broke by the third day after work, like after getting paid. So that was our problem. But anyway, as time went on, I started picking up on little things after that relationship. The fact that when I made arrangements with people to like hang out, they would keep like changing the plans and changing the plans until ultimately the plan only has like this amount of window and nothing's going to be open. So ultimately they'll have to hang out at my place. And fortunately I always shut it down. Or even if I don't shut it down, they come over and I will be doing something. None of this was planned. It always happened that at night I always do my paintings or I'm cooking or something. So there is no time for them to try to get their evil plan in of getting to sleep with me just to have, you know, that experience with the person of color. So they always disappeared. And I couldn't really, like, I used to internalize it. I was like, maybe I sucked. Like, Maybe I was, I had no personality. Maybe I was just wasn't an interesting person. I don't know, but I used to internalize it. Now, part of it, I sabotage myself because as I said in earlier videos, me getting fully tatted and growing a beard also reinforced what the expectations were. Um, and it reinforced the expectations from, uh, for both white and black people. Because when I started, um, when I moved to the city and then I, I started meeting off the bat, I started meeting black people. I didn't go out of my way to meet white people at all. And I remember I had a couple of friends that were black and, and they just always made me feel so alienated. Um, I remember they would, they would ask me questions and that it's almost like they were asking questions so they would they could come with something offensive to say for example i remember one of my friends he was like oh we got to toughen you up a little bit um there was another one that was like oh you're just too soft like i don't like my men's and i'm like okay i'm just gonna walk away because what you're not gonna do is make me feel like i used to feel when i was in high school like we're not we're not doing this okay i'm an adult now I'm not going to sit around with that kind of stuff. And there have been a few white people that have done that. And I cut them off just the same. Because at the end of the day, 
I know it's hard being yourself, but when you get to a point where you want to be yourself and then people start coming in and telling you that, no, not be yourself, but not this self, like I can't. So anyway, another way I would figure it out was, um, everybody would reach out to me, but then the moment I started talking about topics that are important to me, they stop responding or they just come up with something real quick and be like, anyway, I'd love to talk about all that when I see you. Um, what's your schedule like? And I used to believe that that meant they wanted to talk about it in person. Yeah, when you meet them in person, they are not, they're going to let you know they don't have enough time. Um, what do you do sexually? And at that point, you're like, okay, they give two, they don't give two rats ass about what is important to me. Another way I, f I could tell someone's fetishizing is um, how much, like, how much do they want to know about me and what they want to know? So if everything is all about Jamaicans this, Jamaicans that, I heard Jamaicans this, I heard Jamaicans that, Jamaicans are good in bed, I heard Jamaicans all have large genitals, and I'm like, I'm not even going to answer that because that makes zero sense. It's just like when people say, oh, Jamaicans always have big butts. I'm like, Jamaica is not an origin. It would have been an origin if the Tainos weren't killed. It's not an origin. It was, in fact, I remember we have this book called The People Who Came. Jamaica is a place where people came, okay? So there is no pure bloodline there. There is aspects of every racial identity. So that would make no sense unless there's some plant growing there that everybody feeds on that makes their butt big or something. It makes no sense. Um, also, a lot of times you could tell if it's fetishization, if they approach you from a place of ignorance, but they're proud of the ignorance. So I've had people that have said to me that, oh, I thought you were Dominican or something. Oh, I thought all people in Jamaica were like very, very dark. And I'm like... Yeah, that's what I thought about Puerto Rico, and Puerto Rico is very multiracial, colorful people, just like Jamaica. And they'll apologize, like, oh my god, I had no idea. I was like, no, 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 i seen the media, I know what the media makes it look like. Like, it's just a piece of Africa that broke off and flew over into the Caribbean Sea. Like, you know, I get it. But if it gets to the point where all they're talking about are things that you know are represented on porn, you are being fetishized, my friend, and you are in danger. Another one is... Um, you're trying to date them, but they will go ahead and, um, this one is very common. They will keep the relationship very vague. Okay. They'll keep saying stuff like, oh, we, I'm just getting to know you. You know, we're just um, taking it slow, even though you probably talk to them once a week. It can't get any slower than that, honey. It, it's not going anywhere. Um, let's just see where it goes. I'm not ready for a relationship, but you're trying to come to my house every night. Um, there was one I, re I learned recently and it really shocked me. I experienced it, but I didn't realize. The, the constant reminder, and I, I don't know if it happens to any other race. This one, I think it's very common for black and white situations. They constantly say how strong you are. And then they always try to get to you when they're doing shit, like moving furniture and stuff. Someone did it to me and it started snowing and I'm like, I can't come. And this person said, well, I thought N words are supposed to be really strong. Yeah. So I'm happy the snow fell because I learned that one real quick. And unfortunately, this person is in a relationship with a black person. So I'm happy for her. Kudos to you, ma'am. So that's another way. Um, but I think the deeds, oh, another one is they refuse to show you to their family and friends. You're the secret. Um, you know, you're the secret that, oh, I'll, I'll introduce you one day. You know, I think I should know you a little better before, you know, I do all that. When they know everything about you but you barely know anything about them because they're not opening up to you because guess what? They have no intentions of having an emotional connection with you. They have no intention of investing emotion in it, but you're fooled because you don't notice it. And so you go ahead and tell them every single damn thing about yourself and they have no intention. They're just like, 
you're a fun tool. Now, before anyone goes ahead and try to create rebuttals to my statement, number one, I am not obsessed with any other race. I am not obsessed with the race at all. In fact, I've always said to people, if I have the liberty to recreate the person that I would very much love to be with, it would probably be something close to a carbon copy of myself. Okay, there's a reason why I have pictures of myself everywhere and a picture of myself on my debit card because I love myself and I find myself attractive. So I do not, I'm not one of those people that are like envisioning myself with a white person. I'm not like that at all. So because I can't find myself to date, then I'm open to human beings. Okay, the next thing people would say, why not just stick to your own race? Well, I would if I lived in sub-saharan africa of course i would what else do i have but when you're in an area where the only black people there are living in closets or they are so stuck on this weird i don't even know what to say this very hyper masculine aggressive careless carefree personality it's only going to end badly for me and my self-esteem is going to get a couple beating on the way. So I'm not doing that. So that's all I'm left with. And then the, f the few people that I've met, people of color that are fantastic, happen to not come from here. They're from far away and they're just here for school or to work, uh, do like a residency at the hospital. So what do I have? I have all the other races except Hispanics. As Hispanics tend to stick to themselves, which I totally appreciate because I understand why they do it. They don't want to experience all of what I'm talking about um so um and then the next one people like to say it's um oh it's self-hate um yeah the only thing i kind of hate is the behavior of the queer community there i said it so if that were the case then i would be pursuing lots and lots of women so don't even go there with that bullshit also what i pursue is a personality not a race um and my personality is weird edgy strange but at the same time focused and i've gotten a lot of shit for that from different people different races different ages everything because you know i'm not expected to be like that so it makes it very complicated and for someone like me i'm very sensitive to when someone's being someone is fetishizing me i can pick up real quick now especially i'm older because i show my quirky self a lot of people say they don't be they're not vulnerable to people that they don't know i'm vulnerable to everyone because guess what you're going to see the real me so you can make a decision like real quick and i'm a very strange person i'm a very very weird person and a lot of times someone fetishizing, they also fetishize st uh, stereotypes that goes along with. And unfortunately for the black community or the, the, the stereotypes of us are very hardcore stereotypes. And I don't match any of them. So pretty quickly, people move on real quick. Of course, some slipped through the crack where they executed their game pretty well. And I didn't notice until, you know, they were like, uh no, I'm, I'm just going to be single. And then, of course, they go back to, you know, dating white people because I was not, you know, what they envisioned themselves with, which is fine. I'm smarter now and I know how to, I know how to force it out of them. You know, I agitate them. I, I force them to go out with me in public and I force them to do shit, you know, and that kind of, it's like a catalyst of the whole process. And usually after going out three, four times, they start acting weird. I, like I said in early videos, I delete their number and that's the end of that. But it's very complicated. I don't know what it is like for Hispanics. I know for Asians, it can be very frustrating because I had an Asian friend that he said every time someone talks to him, they already, they don't, like they're asking questions, but it's more of a question of confirming what they already think. And he used to be so frustrated. He's like, I can't live here. And he went right back to California so he could live in a small Asian community. And I totally understand. It's very frustrating because when you're trying to settle down and establish a lifestyle, someone constantly trying to use you for a hookup, it gets to you. And it can really, really destroy your self-esteem. It can actually mess up your standards of beauty and what you think is beautiful. And before you know it, you start seeing your own people as unattractive because they seem less valuable than anyone else but for me i am able to surpass all of that because i will tell people to their face nothing is more beautiful to me 
than the boldest blacks. I say it all the time. I remember, as a matter of fact, I think I said it to someone uh, three days ago that to me, I love the boldest black, that black that just looks so unreal. It's like, how is a human being able to have that color? It is so bold and it is so strong. It just reminds me of something I would like to paint on a picture. That is so attractive, okay? And I see people, I've seen people that are so white that everything is white, their eyelashes and everything. I was like, wow, is that an avatar? I can appreciate beauty in every race and every ethnicity. It is just unfortunate that when you live in an area that doesn't have a lot of diversity, a lot of times people around you, some may be well-meaning, but because of what they see around them and what people have said, it can really affect what they think is attractive or what is wholesome. And so they may end up fetishizing you without even knowing it. You know, but anyway, I would love to hear what other people have, have to say about it. Um, as a white person, how do you think about this? Have you ever noticed yourself doing it? Have you ever noticed anyone doing it? Um, if you're another race, how do you think that other races do it? And what's your experience? Um, and until next time, peace.